I thought that we would start off by having, uh, well, w you can call it panel discussion. You can also call it a fireside chat. I mean, it's quite warm in here. So even though we don't have a fireside, we can have a fireside chat. Um, and I would like to introduce and bring up on stage the, the core stakeholders of uh, Sensible Stockholm Lab. And Sonia Berlin is uh, representing, of course, KTH. She's also the head of the School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science and has made all of this possible. I would like to bring up on stage, representing the city of Stockholm, urban strategist, Lukas Jungqvist. Please come up. And I think you guys can stand up now. Yeah. yeah so, okay. <coughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and representing the Stockholm Chamber of Commerce, Deputy CEO, Daniela Waldfogel. Welcome up. Uh, representing NewSec, Chief Product Officer, Digital Investments and Transformation, Stronghold Invest, Magnus Santagud, welcome. And representing MIT, Sensible City Lab, Director, Professor Carlo Ratti. Uh, all of you are really welcome. Thank you. And um, I would like to start off with an open question to all of you. And, and uh, you know, it's a chat, so, so <laughs> we don't have to be too formal. Um, what are your reflections on the importance of collaboration between academia, the city, and the business sector in order to address the challenges facing us today? Who wants to start off? Daniela. I can start actually, uh, and I would like to uh, stress the word challenges because, like, <laughs> societies are facing quite big challenges right now. Uh, cities are ch facing big challenges, and, and Stockholm is as well. Actually, uh, we have uh, housing segregation. We have problems when it comes to inclusion. We have problems with congestion and with sustainability. And the common denominator for these challenges is that um, they're, they're growing more and more complex. And that one actor, uh, politics alone, municipalities alone, the business community alone, cannot solve them. So we need to collaborate more. We need to cooperate, we need to pool resources, we need to uh, pool knowledge. And uh, what is so interesting about the Sensible Stockholm Lab is that this is exactly what we're doing. We're pooling knowledge and resources between the academic sector, between the business community, and between the, the city of Stockholm. And I think that uh, a more concrete way to do it is hard to find. So um, this is really interesting from that perspective, from the business communi mm. community perspective. I could fill in on yes. From a business perspective, so NewSec is a private owned company. and. We have a saying that we love cities, since we are deeply in commercial real estate. Uh, and we do collaborate in many different ways with other stakeholders in the commercial space. Um, but we really like this to have a more, um, not as active part as KTH has in the commercial real estate market as is. And also MIT, ob obviously, to add also the tech layer in a bit more advanced that is done in ordinary work life, to be honest. So that's a good mm. point for us. Mm. And I would say, yeah, no. can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I would say, you know, to add to that, yes, you know, first of all, the city is a universe. In a city, you need to bring together different people, so with different, uh, you know, type of different uh, disciplines. Uh, also, the private sector and academia, uh, the city, of course, you know, so this is coming together in order to solve complex issues. But the other thing that we've seen at Sensible, uh, you know, we've now been operating for around 20 years on the, uh, on the MIT side, uh, is uh, how we can really use the same methodology that startups use in order to innovate mm -hmm. and, and, and accelerate change in the city. And just to tell you, so for instance, some of the Ideas that were develop, have been developed on the campus at MIT um, have raised to date around almost half a billion uh, in order to, to become uh, startups and companies, some very, very successful. Uh, in the same way, some of the things we've done with industry then have resulted in, uh, for instance, in things like, you know, uh, Uber pool uh, that became like a 20 billion industry. So somehow what I want to say is that what we can do, we've got a great opportunity here mm -hmm. to also bring the thinking of industry mm. and the thinking of startups and innovation into the core uh, of urban innovation. Mm. Thank you. Lucas. Yes. Uh, 
very nicely put, I would say, <laughs> because this is actually what we need to think about in a collaboration like this. We need to be very keen on finding the roles that we have, the different stakeholders and how to collaborate. And being the municipality, if NewSec loves uh, the city, we love it even more, <laughs> 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 I would say. No, but it's, it's our responsibility to, ha to plan for a, a sustainable uh, life and a sustainable environment for all the citizens in the city, together with mm -hmm. you together with the companies and I, I mean the, the the academia the part that you play is is to deliver the new knowledge on how to do it and the thing that we need to understand is how to bridge the gap mm. between how to do it uh, theoretically and then really to implement it which is our task in a way and this is something we, we need to you know focus on and, and detail I think in the work forward mm. in the lab. thank you uh, so, yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm yes. happy that you bring up uh, the theme of innovation um, because uh, th there are a lot of innovation theories uh, out there and um, so, so uh, we talk about a lot about the valley of death when you talk about innovation and I think this uh, Stockholm model is uh, a, a quite known model to, to, to um uh, to overcome this valley of death, because the universities they usually um, do research in very low TRL levels. Uh, then you have maybe some industry that bring the TRL level level up, and when it gets implemented, is there. And there are like two, three valley of death. And by this type of cooperation, where you have all the partners that we have here, you overcome these valleys of death, and also you get some kind of feedback. So this is like the newer model for innovation. Wha wha we have called the, the Stockholm model then. And I, I think it's very good to see this here. And also, uh, as I said, I'm very happy that it's here in Shista because we, one, we know that education, education, education is one of the major um, tools we have for, um, uh, cha for tackling a number of societal challenges, mm -hmm. uh, to get less in unemployment, to get more inclusion. And I think that is also where Kate the H can play a role because we're not a research institute, we are a university where we do education and research. And here we can also bring, we have the possibility to bring the newest research directly in education. That means that the companies here, they get the access to the mm -hmm. absolute newest uh, uh, research that's uh, ongoing. So I think by this collaboration, we strengthen a lot. We strengthen, uh, we, t we tackle social challenges, we strengthen our research, we strengthen our education, and you know we also strengthen uh, the, the municipalities and the industry that's here. So I think this is extremely excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, to you. add to, to, to what Sonia is saying, is very important. We're discussing before, you know, another thing we've been learning on the MIT campus, uh, and I think you know that I think we can really build on that. Uh, on, on that um, is um, you know think about innovation 20 years ago. The innovation was mostly say in digital space. It was easy to try something, to launch new initiatives. You know, some would fail, some would not. It's much more difficult when you do it in a city because then the city becomes the lab. But clearly, you know, you cannot accept the same things that happen you know separately in a, in other space in the city where actually you know you might you need to accept for innovation possible failures and so on. so there are a couple of things you know one is the crucial role the central role that the, the city needs to play in this and has been playing in the past 3 years and has been amazing to work with uh, with with city hall um, and the second thing in this lab which is an urban lab then it becomes a wonderful opportunity for uh, uh, for people for students uh, of all levels for researchers to be engaged. So it becomes like, uh, again, this mentoring space uh, that yes. I, uh, we, we call it in a different way on the MIT side, but you know, we're discussing this morning. So this becomes like a great urban lab that uh, can become a different way of learning by doing things together in the city. Mm. Yeah, no, you, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, and I also think we have to bring in and bridge the gap between academia, the city of Stockholm, and the business community, because there mm. is still a gap. Mm. Mm. Uh, we are still working in silos, and we have a business community in the Stockholm and Uppsala region, the capital region, that is really in the forefront when it comes to innovation, when it comes to sustainability, when it comes to uh, being in the technical forefront. And uh, this uh, business community needs to be more involved uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, actually, in what is happening in these exciting projects. Uh, yeah, and that is, I think, one of the great things, uh, putting the lab here in Shista, because in Shista we already have the Shista Science City, mm -hmm. which has been operating like that for over... I don't know, 10, 15 years, 
20, 40, 40 years. 40 years, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, actually really bridging the gap mm. between research and uh, companies and implementation. So, uh, and this is also your part of the, the SSL Shista initiative now that mm. we are starting up and it's really, uh, really, I'm really happy about it because I think that we will actually be able to use the big development mm. processes that is happening here. We will build mm. 8,000 new housing units in Shista in the years to come. And this is the opportunity for us to really implement things from research in mm. the in mm. the real uh, living environment. Mm. Can I um, to continue this? I think this is really interesting. It's uh, to challenge you a bit uh, in the day-to-day -day work mm -hmm. and process. How will you implement this bridging between researchers? I mean, student groups, researchers, the city, and what is the main contribution from the mi business sector? I mean, what, what can you sort of put on the table? Mm. Because, I mean, everything y that you say is, is brilliant, and we're all aiming at it, but, you know, in the daily work, mm. how do we... How do we do this? How do you walk through the yeah. valley well, of death? I think exactly. One of the, uh, <laughs> I think uh, one of the greatest challenges is that we are in different, um, so to say, horizons in a way. Mm. I mean, for the business life, you're very short term. It's very much about the quarter or the fiscal year. And academia, you may be much longer and more lower tier of knowledge and insights. Um, and I think one good starting point where we all can be much better is about communication. Mm. What is going on? Where, in where, what stage are the different projects? Who are working with them? Get to know them, get insights, information, updates, understand the time frame. So it's very much down to communication, mm. I would say. And um, that's always hard. I mean, mm. most people complain about tech. I've never a problem with tech. I've always a problem with people who can't communicate. Mm. <laughs> but that may just be me. Yeah. <laughs> So I think it's a b that's a big challenge for yeah. but I, all, all parties. Yeah. And, and mm. before I let in the rest of you, I would like to ask Daniela to describe maybe a bit yeah. about the business uh, advisor. So uh, from a Chamber of Commerce perspective, we're now taking this to the next level. So we have set up a business advisory board to the to the uh, uh, Sensible Stockholm Lab. Uh, and so we've gathered 15 of our member companies on a CTO or a CDO level, that is chief technology officer or chief development officer level. And we're meeting with uh, Carlo and with some of the researchers in the lab for the first time this Friday. And uh, the purpose of this of, is, of course, to bridge that gap uh, and to actually set up a board that will be up and running for uh, at least a year uh, where we can communicate, where we can share perspectives, where we can um, like, um, even uh, discuss whether there is a possibility to, to share data because you were asking mm -hmm. what can the business community bring mm -hmm. to the table. And I believe that, that the collection of data is, is a concrete thing that could mm -hmm. com come up on the table. Mm -hmm. So we're very, very happy about this and we think that uh, this can actually contribute to us working less in silos and more mm. together. Excellent. Yeah, thanks, Daniela. That, by the way, the, the, the event on Friday sounds very exciting, so thanks a lot, Daniela. Uh, the, the collaboration of the past three years with the Chamber and with the city, of course, has been, uh, has been really enriching for, for both sides. One quick thing is that to me, to be very concrete and see how you know, this can happen, um, is uh, it's great to, to talk with the CTOs on Fridays and the high level, but ultimately, is it about people doing things together in the mm. city, again, using the city as a lab. And then by doing things together is when those ideas come up. And then once ideas are shared, then there are many, many ways that they become reality. Maybe somebody mm -hmm. in industry mm -hmm. is, uh, gets an inspiration. Maybe somebody, uh, one of the students decides to do a startup and becomes one of the mm -hmm. future members mm -hmm. of the Chamber <laughs> of Commerce. I mean, there's many different paths. Okay. But again, by doing things together is usually how we best share information and we can come up with uh, radical creative ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you bring up an excellent point because uh, the, the vision that I had uh, is that, that so why, why, do, why do I want to have this sensible Stockholm lab together with a future mental space is that we see that we have a new generation of citizens arising, uh, citizens that are much more aware about mm -hmm. sustainability and don't want to be passive, they want to be active. And I think by having this opportunity to combine then mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the teaching or the education that we do here together with such an initiative uh, brings in a lot of value because then curious um, uh, young adults, <coughs> they can come here, they can learn and they can also make a difference. Mm -hmm. So in, I think um, 
if they are interested, usually they live around here in this area, they want maybe to change something, mm -hmm. they, they, they are experiencing the real problem, then the idea is that they could come here and then say, okay, I experienced this in my near environment. Maybe we can work together mm -hmm. with some partners that we have here in this Sensible Stockholm Lab to find a solution. And as you said, maybe uh, start up uh, some new initiative. And I think it's also great to have to work internationally in this because uh, then you see the differences in the regulations and laws and, uh, and stuff like that also that giving some prerequisites to uh, to innovation so i think it's both good to do this in, in a national way and also in the stockholm model, model i think that's really good and to have then the education and the research and the application so close integrated i think that's really unique lucas would you like to comment um yeah, I think <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I like to talk, but it's uh, I know. It, yeah. <laughs> no, but I think uh, it's really important to find the right way to collaborate when when we do this. Uh, and and in the lab, what we have been aiming for is to deliver new knowledge on how to plan the city for the future. Uh, but I think coming to, Ch to Chista now is also uh, a way to, to step down into yeah. the nitty gritties of yes. the city, right? Mm. And to understand uh, you know, the, the block level, the neighborhood level, but also the building level. Mm. Mm. And doing that, there are other initiatives at KTH. We're, we're being a center now at mm. KTH, I think we have better uh, possibilities to collaborate with mm. them. And, and in that way, you know, reaching out to other companies that mm -hmm. are already in collaboration and building a network mm -hmm. that can gain the city and mm -hmm. the citizens, mm -hmm. uh, bringing, yeah. bringing the research and the innovation mm -hmm. to their benefit. Maybe if I can, uh, if I can add something, it seems that the, the word keeps some surfacing also in what uh, Lucas and Sonia were saying is kind of this network idea. And it's mm -hmm. network, I think we need to look at that inside the university, so inside mm -hmm. KTH, with all the different communities coming together. Also with uh, the partnership with the city, the chamber, the, the business community mm. at large, but also international network. And, uh, uh, you know, we are very excited. We've been so excited working together over the past uh, uh, three years and now, you know, uh, ramping up here in this new beautiful space. So, by the way, uh, congrats in, 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 in putting it together. But, uh, but basically, we see this as more and more important. And, um, you know, this collaboration clearly... Uh, you know, the sensible MIT. We've been uh, collaborating in uh, in Amsterdam now for for seven years with a base uh, there. We're just o we'll, we'll open soon a, a new lab in uh, Rio de Janeiro, focusing on informality. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is a network. We can learn exactly. a lot from different conditions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, in different cities, in different climates, with different social things. But also sharing many things. Even uh, in yeah. in the favelas of Rio, there's things we are learning from Boston. And the mm -hmm. same thing we can I think can happen here. And what I find particularly interesting in this network is that. Uh, Shista now is, you know, somehow the content, the container become the same thing. We're here in Shista, we are in the place, in a place that, uh, you know, is in transformation itself. And at the same time, you know, we're studying the city. So content and container become. Yeah, yeah and I, I agree with you. And also what is unique, wha why we have uh, as, a, as a management of the school decided to place here <laughs> is because here we have the 5G research. Here we have the connections to, to, to uh, amongst other Ericsson. Here we have, let's say, all the semiconductor ongoing, all the uh, IoT that we need to be able to, to sense and to do that. And we have the, you know, the computer science and the AI here. So this can be some, <coughs> we have very close to all that we need mm -hmm. to, to, to solve the, the challenges that we have in a city. And I think that makes it the place on itself very unique. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and uh, uh, I think one reflection is also that with, with the challenges that we have worldwide now, globally, it's something that actually unites us because the mm -hmm. challenges are the same all over the mm -hmm. globe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's different as it if you compare it to like 40 or 50 years mm. ago mm. When, when there were different, but there are some of the, cha I wouldn't say all of course, but some of the challenges really unite us mm. globally. Mm. Mm. If you look at the environment, the climate, sustainability, etc. cetera. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. so mm. uh, local solutions, clearly, you know, because also think about the climate, yeah. the solution in, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in Scandinavia is going to be maybe, if you think about sustainability, more related to wind, in other countries more related to sun, mm -hmm. in terms of renewable energies or nuclear. So, so solutions can be different. But yes, you know, the challenges, first and foremost, climate change, but think about also what we've been doing over the mm. past three years about looking at urban mm. segregation. Mm. Mm. But that's exactly. a challenge that applies mm. to most cities mm -hmm. uh, exactly. around the planet. The solutions here can actually become a model for mm. uh, many other places. Mm. Exactly. Mm. That's the great thing working with you, I think, at MIT, uh, but also with KTH, because you have this network internationally. Mm. Mm. 
I, I remember you, pa <laughs> Fabio, you told me, why, why do you want to work with heat in Stockholm? It makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> but it's <laughs> but How do you mean, Fabio? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really, but it, but that's really the case. Have you spent really the winter here? <laughs> 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 but, it's, but it's really an issue mm -hmm. here, uh, and it's becoming more and more an issue because we haven't been planning for it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, we're inviting the sun in all the buildings. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, but that, that's the thing. It's we have the same we have the same challenges, but there is a gradient, right? So, yeah. <laughs> because it's always uh, yeah locally defined. So. Yeah. If if uh, um, sorry, was there a comment I missed? No, no, no. no. Okay. Uh, if we look at the the uh, future of the lab or the center. Uh, we, it's very research intense, as, uh, intensive, as of course it should be. Uh, what about the student perspective? How do you see about bringing in the students into the... Well, everyone is looking at me <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> why uh, is that? Yeah, why is that? <laughs> no, I, I think, as I said, I think we have to do with, uh, with a new, uh, with a new um, a generation of uh, p people that are very engaged in, in, in the, the climate concerns that we have. And I think also they want to contribute to do this in some way. And I think um, by having this um, lab here in col collaboration with, uh, with our mentor spaces that uh, we are trying to establish here, um, I think that gives a great opportunity also because, um, and, and that's also the difference, uh, I try to explain that in an email from time to time, I think one of the issues, th one of the challenges that we have in, in, in Sweden is that we have lack of uh, human resources. So we have a lot of ideas, we have a lot of uh, challenges, but it's extremely, extremely difficult to, to hire um, engineers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think by, by having this collaboration with the industry, with the municipalities, I think we can make our education also mm. much more attractive mm. and by that uh, yeah higher um, get more students um, uh, to be to active students and to have more students here more students engaged and also than for the for the companies in uh, Stockholm which I know we have a, a there is a deficit already for engineers I think it is a very a good way to, to get very early this um, uh, employer branding and that not everyone wants to work at Google and Amazon, but also actually uh, to, to, yeah. to companies here in, in, in Stockholm. And I think that may, may also work. Oh, let, let, let's hear, we are this company and uh, we work with these. And the students may think, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I would like to work there. Uh, so I think mm. this, uh, this having this uh, connection between the industry, the municipalities and the university is for that perspective on the long run very important because I mean how do we make uh, Sweden uh, ha keep the competitive advantage that we have we need we need really need uh, educated engineers and I think that's why international cooperation cooperation with industry I think we can make the education here really interesting for many many more and uh, I think new people sometimes dare to question young people sometimes dare to qu question the established way of doing mm -hmm. things so I think that uh, th that is very good. So I think here you got uh, not only a mix of uh, different uh, interests, but also a mix of different uh, ages and different generations. And I think that will be uh, be interesting. Mm. So uh, I think this will uh, um, I think this will contribute also to the quality of the education that we have here. Mm. If you can be build on that very quickly, it seems to me one thing we can say is that <coughs> you know clearly the focus is about innovating in urban space. Yes. But I think we've got to focus about innovating on ourselves as academic institutions. Mm -hmm. I personally mm -hmm. believe all universities globally are now undergoing the same transformation that we see in other industries. And, you know, and we know that actually students at MIT like now to watch a lot of classes uh, remotely. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, you know, they need to come together. Mm -hmm. And again, a lab mm -hmm. is a mm -hmm. perfect environment where mm -hmm. they can come together, mm -hmm. do mentorship, doing peer-to-peer -peer dynamics. Yes. So those are kind of the two things that could help us mm -hmm. to use the lab not only mm -hmm. to innovate in the city, mm -hmm. but innovate mm -hmm. on ourselves, on the future mm -hmm. of education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Lucas. I, I also want to add, I mean, not everybody that wants to learn something are young. Mm. 
Mm. So I want to add the, <laughs> the, the lifelong, <laughs> the lifelong still learning. Young, right? yeah. We are still young. We yes. are still young. Yeah. 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 No, but uh, so I, because mm. being a municipality, we, we cannot afford paying the same wages as everybody else. So if you educate somebody yes. that is brilliant, they will probably go to Google, right? Yeah. Not, yeah. not to the city of Stockholm. Unfortunately, except for me, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but but, uh, but still. So I think uh, you know, yeah. if we could add that to the lab, yeah, this uh, lifelong yeah. learning, as we call mm. it, uh, yeah. I think that would be yeah, also a uh, great yeah. way yeah. to connect so it. So if we come up with something brilliant in the lab and there is a methodology that we could implement, mm. maybe we should have some classes so mm. that we know how mm. to do it. Right? And that's mm. where the the communication that you were talking about mm. with the business sector is, for example, mm. is so extremely important because mm. I think that the lab has a great potential of including uh, young <laughs> and old students, elderly <laughs> students, <laughs> sorry, uh, to, ha to include students, period, yeah. uh, in, in the research, because, I mean, we have this possibility of doing um, our thesis, our master's thesis, for example, which is one semester long, so it's, it's uh, quite a bit, uh, quite a por portion of the master's program, and, and very many of our students want to do their thesis in the business mm. sector. So, yes. I mean, that communication and that interaction, I think, could be really mm. interesting. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and I think it's not just about communication, actually. Mm. It's from both sides, it's about selling what you have. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, because, w for example, about thesis, uh, sometimes I came across subject in the everyday work life that, oh, this would be perfect to have a student to do a thesis on. But to be honest, even though I'm graduated from KTH many years back, I still really don't know how long is the thesis nowadays. What, what, yeah, mm. yeah, <laughs> and what is the amount of work mm. yeah, from the, the employer? Exactly. Do I need to have a desk? Yeah. Do I need to have a f f mm -hmm. more or less half-time assistant? Mm. Or I mean, there's so mm -hmm. many questions, and you don't really know where to start. And then you know, okay, I don't, I don't have time with this. So exactly. Maybe in a week or two. Yeah, and I then it's yeah. Yeah. to make that super simple to understand, mm -hmm. okay, what can we do? Could we do yeah. like a project in a course or a thesis yes. or a yeah, mm. PhD and, and, and mm. what comes and what is, what is, so to say, asked by the, the, mm. the yeah, company exactly. so to, to, to provide. Not expected. To yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I think there's so many out there that could be super interesting projects, but you just don't have the time no, to exactly. look into it and you don't really know where to start and where to yeah. call and mm -hmm. who to talk to at KTH. Yeah, no, it's a large organization. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need more natural or natural yeah. and uh, intensified dialogue. That yes. is more like mm. uh, not something that you need to plan for, but no. just a better dialogue between these different silos because exactly. there still yeah. are different silos. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Sorry, Sonia. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you come back to the point of communication, as you mm. mentioned, because, I mean, we are living in, an, in, in a time where there is really a communication overflow. Uh, so, and I think still the best uh, type of communication, or uh, again, uh, I changed my mind a little bit during the years. <laughs> In the beginning, email was great. Now it's like oh, another email. So, so I think the best way of uh, to communicate and to bring people together is actually being physical yeah. together. I think we have seen this also on the, under the COVID. Yes, we can collaborate very well online using digital tools. It will help us. It will bring it more effective. But in some situations, you actually need to be Definitely. together. And it is when you have um, questions about complex nature, where it's not, okay, shall I go to the left or to the right? And you get an answer. But if you say, okay, I have a thesis, how would I like to organize it? And then I'm very happy to announce that we put here the right people together, because we don't only will have the mentor spaces here, but we also have... Um, I'm a little bit unsure about the name in English, but we have we the plan to have some uh, room for teachers and to uh, what is it, study council, study counselors, mm. is counselors here. So if you have an idea for mm. a master thesis, I think they're sitting exactly in this corridor. So mm. I think that's this great. is uh, really, really, really great, no, I, I and, and that's the importance of physical uh, meeting places. I strongly believe in in person meetings. I love conferences much mm. more than offices mm. five mm. days a week. Um, but one challenge is to get the people in the room. Yeah. Yes. And that's mm. the selling part. Yes, mm. exactly. And you also need so to remember that... So that's why we that need the coffee <laughs> machine, yeah, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> but you also need to remember that the, the Stockholm business community, of course, we have a lot of very known big brands, but we all yes. have a very, very diverse yeah, exactly. diversified yes. business yes. community with companies that are growing really, really fast yes. that would be yeah. really, really into hearing more about what is happening here. Yes. So you just need to find them. We need to find them and we yes. need to put them in the same yeah. spot. Exactly. Well, well, one other thing, however, one, one 
to ask I have for the for the business community in general and so on is uh, what we see a lot at MIT. You know that there's also uh, from from the business side also uh, there has to be the acceptance of a bit more randomness. I mean, one characteristic of students, at least at MIT, is that sometimes they vanish. You know, they start something and then you know they go too many exams or so. So somehow you know there's a, there's a way of working. It also uh, has to be based more on this. Also accepting a higher degree of uh, great idea that come up, but also in a, yeah. in a way that's flexibility. A bit, in yeah. a way that flexibility a bit that's a bit less yeah. structure. Going back yeah. to your point again, even PhD mm. students sometimes you know it happens. You might PhD that decide for a, for a year we study something then decides that she doesn't want to spend the rest yeah. of the PhD on that. No, thing. So uh, absolutely. I mean, both sides I think can mm. improve a lot on communication. Communication. Mm and how to be working together it's a you can ask much more from the from the private sector mm. to to mm. understand more the academia and um, yeah other yeah, terms of long long term yeah. learnings mm. so it's both both sides for sure and we also need to have respect for the different uh, pieces that we have mm. uh, that things m might take longer time when it comes to the academic sector and there's a reason for that mm. uh, and we need to understand that maybe we have uh, more of a quarterly mindset uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to the private sector. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and as you were saying, communication, dialogue, and also streamlining the process mm -hmm. so that it's yeah. easy. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also to yeah, make yeah. it easy for people within, like myself, to yeah. sell the idea exactly. and to mm -hmm. yeah. become yeah. and continue yeah. being a sponsor. To so mm -hmm. so help, the, help the person to sell it internally, because mm -hmm. most people need to tell someone else mm -hmm. also. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, uh, we have five more minutes, so I'm going to give you one minute each uh, to tell us about what is your vision for a sensible Stockholm lab? Kylo. Um, well, I think, you know, uh, after um, now uh, three years working together, it's great to have a physical space. We, uh, uh, we had a paper two weeks ago that was led actually by Paolo here in, uh, in Nature Computational Science that really showed how physical space can accelerate human interactions, creativity, and a number of other things based on big data. And so uh, to me, this is kind of like a, a quantum leap uh, in, in order of having uh, now this beautiful space that you created and, uh, and using this as a lab for a bigger lab, which is the city. Mm, fantastic. Magnus. From the music perspective, it's very much about applying a more tech methodology to understand the city and, to be very frank, to foresee changes in market value. Mm. That's what we're selling. Yeah, and from the Chamber of Commerce perspective, we have a very ambitious vision, and that is to make Stockholm into the best capital of, of Europe. And I believe that a lab uh, like this that really brings together like the different sectors of the society uh, uh, helps to put Stockholm on, a ma on the map, on the international map, because uh, we really show that we are in the forefront. Um, and this is actually true as well, because the city is, and Stockholm is the most innovative uh, capital of Europe right now, according to the, the European Commission. And I believe that uh, this initiative, if it uh, gets even more power into it, uh, can actually take us in the right direction when it comes to becoming uh, the best uh, capital in, in, uh, in Europe. Thank you. Lucas? Yeah. Uh, I think what we have already been uh, discussing here are, are kind of the key points. So what we need to do is to find stability and to be able to do that. The center is a very good thing. Uh, and then I would love to have some education, but uh, the most important thing is to continue the research and on citywide level as well as here locally in Shista and to engage the, the community, uh, the research community, but also the companies, of course. Um, and then, well, for, for us, Internally in the city of Stockholm, uh, you know, driving digitalization is an important issue because if mm. we want to implement things, we need people educated, but also the systems that we need uh, and the data structure and everything. And there is another important uh, side business of the lab that I'm hoping a lot to, to develop over the year mm. to create like a, a data repository where we can exchange information easily and uh, work together. Because mm. in the digital era, uh, data is the, <laughs> is the thing, right? We need, without the same data sources, we do not really work together, I would mm. say. Before I let in Sonia tell the final word, I just wanted to add that uh, education is not... Um, it doesn't counteract the research. When, when, not, when I speak about education, I, I'm talking about bringing in the education into the research and combining the two. Because I think that strengthens the research. If you have a number of, for example, final degree master students 
um, the final degree thesis master students in your research projects. It's not instead of, it's an addition to benefit the collaboration. Just so to clarify what I meant. Yes, Sonia. Yeah, well, well I, I like the question that challenges me a little bit, but I always have like big visions and, and stuff like that. So first of all, I hope that this will be a great success uh, with uh, now Anna as a new director. Uh, and I think we will be able to grow. And I hope that this will be a place where we will do Extend the, uh, e excellent research, really good research um, on the edge research, very uh, applicable um, to, to, to uh, local challenges. And then also to have this, um, uh, to create a place where researchers would like to come and feel that, okay, here is the place to be, because here we have everything to do that we need to have for very, very good research. And I also, by that, I hope to inspire, let's say, uh, younger people to participate and give the possibility to engage in, in, in community uh, problems. And then having this connection between, you know, education and research and implementation, I think if we get that, then I would be really happy and to have it grow and to have more companies engaging in this uh, this center because I mean uh, th this will also be um, in in the big interest of uh, all the companies here uh, in 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 Shista but also around oh, the better environment we create the better people that thrive the better uh, skills we get and you, you get a positive development and I think uh, that's needed uh, here in Shista but I think it also gives a very good opportunity to our school to to see that uh, if we want we can do really make a difference. Mm. Thank you very much. And and to round off, I think it's it's uh, um, this is a fantastic kickoff for for the continuation of the Sensible Stockholm Lab. And I think one of the main challenges also for the future is to the outreach and the communication of results, because I often hear from from my youngsters that nothing's happening. You're not mm. doing anything. Exactly. A lot is happening but we're not that good at communicating it. I mean, we're communicating mm. it between research to researcher, but the, the, the inhabitants, mm. the people that work and live in the area, they don't see that anything is happening. Mm. So I think that's one of our big mm. challenges as well. And this center, mm. I think, is, is one of the, uh, one of the um, major ingredients in, in uh, that outreach. Yeah, but um, I think that's also what I was thinking, yeah. that, that, I mean, what great opportunity for the people that are here to be able exactly. to bring some citizens, some citizens here and to mm. see, oh, this is what we're working with, this is what we're doing. Mm. And I think that would be great for all, uh, all Definitely. of you here mm. to have the possibility mm. to, bring, uh, to bring your uh, stakeholders exactly. or to bring mm. a group of interest here mm. and see what's going mm. on here. Exactly. I think that would be really good. Thank you mm -hmm. very Thank much. You. Yeah.